Hey everybody! For today's Leave No Trace lesson, I'm going to teach you a little bit about planning ahead and preparing, which is principle one! If you remember the hand signal, it's to plan ahead and prepare by writing everything you need down before you go somewhere. I've got my day pack here with some water, warm clothes, a first aid kit, and a couple other things. For an activity, let's go check out what's going on over here! For today's activity, you're just going to need three things so that we can learn about how to plan ahead and prepare. Those three things are a marker, a deck of cards, and a bunch of paper. And you're going to start off by taking your marker, writing off a whole bunch of things on the paper of things you might need for anything from a short day hike to an extended backpacking trip, including essentials and non-essential items. After you've written out everything, what you want to do is decide a location to go for a hike. For our sake, we're going to choose one in Rocky Mountain National Park. We'll choose Loch Vale. It's about a six mile hike in the Glacier Gorge area. It's located on the historic lands of the Ute, Cheyenne, and possibly other indigenous people. Once you've decided where you're going to go for a hike, it's time to play the game. So you get your two or three players and you split up your deck of cards into two different stacks. Say you don't have a deck of cards? That's okay, you can just do games of rock, paper, scissors. The game starts by each player putting down a card. Whoever has the highest card gets to choose which item they get to take on their hike with them. So this person is gonna choose some boots since that might be helpful for them. You're gonna repeat the process and each time the higher card gets to choose the item they take with them. And you're going to repeat this over and over until every single item is gone. After you've played the game, spread all of your cards out so you can see what you all got and then compare who might be more prepared for the hike. So this person, in terms of footwear, might be a little more prepared because they can choose for boots or running shoes, Well, this person just has flip-flops and socks. And then you can also look at what you're carrying everything in. A large backpacking bag might be a little much for a six mile hike, but a small day pack would be about right. You can also bring some water and enough food with you, whereas this person only has water purification and no food. However, they do have a map. But this person has a 1998 Toyota Sienna, essential in some adventures, but maybe not this one. So that's how you play this game. Try playing it again by choosing a different length of hike, a different place to hike, or a completely different activity in general, and see how you can be better prepared for each activity. In the meantime, stay healthy! Hi everyone, my name is Seymour Birds, and I would love to tell you all about how you can still enjoy this very delightful hobby called bird watching. Now, I'm a pretty socially distant person anyways, so I'm just very confident in telling you that you can still bird watch even in these times, okay? You can still go out and enjoy the trails, the bike paths, in a healthy and important way, okay? So just get out there and listen for bird song, listen for birds, and I can't wait to see what you find, even if it's just a cool flower or a tree, okay? Some birds that you might see even in your own backyard include a robin or a white-breasted nuthatch or a woodpecker or a morning dove or a house finch. Um, and uh, on the trails you might see something as exciting as a red-tailed hawk. We got all those here in Colorado. And they're out there waiting for you to admire. Because birds like being at least six feet away from people too. So you can still get a quality bird watching time even these days, okay? Other things you can do to make your backyard more welcoming to birds would be maybe make your own bird bath. Birds like bird bath, especially, especially small ones. Um, you could make your own bird feeders. As long as you're being careful, you're just not leaving food out for other animals. That's unhealthy. Um, but I just want you to know that 
waking up hearing some bird songs, walking around seeing, hearing some bird songs um, is a pretty big gift in a pretty stressful time. So good luck out there birders. Jacob here with CCO 112 Weather, showing you how to make a sundial. So a sundial is something that they used in ancient times to tell what time it is. Um, the way it kind of works is basically the sun will hit a uh, stick or something that they call a gnomon. So it's like a stick that you would put in the ground and the sun will hit it and it will cast a shadow. And throughout the day, that shadow will move as the sun moves. And as the day goes on, um, you could kind of put different sticks or rocks or whatever in the ground to mark what time it is. So like, for example, at like 7 a.m., you would come out and where that shadow is cast, you would put a stick in. And then at 8 a.m., you'd come out and do the same, etc. So we have our sundial right here. So this is one that we put out at uh, 9 a.m. this morning and then so on and so forth. Uh, the first recorded sundial was made in around 1500 B.C. in ancient Babylon. Um, but yeah, that's how to make a sundial. It's really easy, really fun to make. Um, you can kind of tell maybe that the shadow's right here, so we can tell from that that it is around uh, 9.46 and uh, 10 seconds. You can tell from the sundial, um, but it's a really fun project to make and really cool.